Good morning, folks. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you guys today? Good morning. Please forgive my uh, tardiness. Uh, I had a situation that I had to take care of. Hey, man, a family uh, needed my help for something, and they just wanted to talk. So, again, please forgive me for coming on a little bit late, but we are here together. Amen. We are here together. Blessing this Thursday, folks. It is Thursday, and um, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about J uh, Jesus feeding the five thousand. Amen. So again, excuse uh, my me being a little late on here. I had to tend to a family that needed some that needed some help. Amen. That needed some help, and um, I'm a father first. Right, husband, father, and then a pastor. Before I come on social media and do this, Amen. So uh, let's just open up in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come together again on this Thursday. We thank you for life. We thank you for your breath, your aha breath, Lord, that has given us life. We thank you for allowing us to open up our eyes this morning to see a new day where we can be your hands and feet. We're privileged and honored, Lord, that you would allow us to be a part of what you're doing for the kingdom. And Lord, and even to spread this good news, right, in the message of the kingdom of all the amazing things that you have done for us and how you want us to do the same thing. Lord, so we're forever humbled, forever humbled. Father, as we continue on in this Bible reading and a little bit of going over what we read, Father, would you be with us, your spirit be with us? Lord, we already know that your word is life. It is life. It's already alive. But we ask for more of your presence and more of your spirit. Lord, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing your words. Lord, strengthen our understanding and our wisdom and even our faith through your word by your holy spirit in jesus name amen and amen good morning folks good morning if you just joined me or just now i said earlier excuse me for coming on a little bit late i had to tend to a family that um just needed someone to talk to amen amen just trying to get situated so let's start reading because yesterday we just finished talking about uh, the death of John the Baptist, but also of the 12, right? We got to see how Jesus gave instructions to the 12 and how he gave them power. He sent them out two by two, and then he gave them power, right? He gave them power to do what? To cast out devils. Amazing, right? And this was before the Holy Spirit had come or the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I share with that the reason for it was because God manifested in flesh was walking among them. So the very source was with them uh, day and night, 24 seven, right? And he gave them the power to do what they needed to do, right? And then after we know that after Jesus uh, left Jesus said I have to go because remember the disciples didn't want him to go they was like no stay stay no don't go don't go and Jesus was like I have to go because if I don't go then the Holy Spirit can come and if the right and the Holy Spirit must come but he said but don't worry right because he said I'm not leaving you as orphan spirits right because my spirit is going to come and then Jesus tells him and he says guess what but greater things you shall do now we know that Jesus did some amazing things right and we know that John tells us or Jude uh, can't remember at the moment but I believe it was John that said that Jesus did so much in his ministry three years and a half right or three years that uh, all the books in the world would not contain what Jesus did during his time as he ministered on earth so what other miracles that Jesus 
uh, did that uh, or didn't go into the gospel. Why only these few miracles, right? Because these few miracles are powerful, they were important, and the miracles that we see in the scriptures were only to fulfill what the prophets have spoke about the Messiah and what he would do, right? We know that there were some prophets and, you know, they did signs and wonders, right? But the Messiah himself would do things that not even the prophets before him had done, and this would prove that he was the Messiah, right? So the miracles that we see are just miracles that only fulfills uh, uh, prophetic, um, uh, uh, prophetic, you know, uh, uh, the, the, that fill the prophecy about Jesus or the Messiah. Amen. But again, let's go back because we went over how the disciples were sent out two by two, right, to with power over evil spirits, right? This is well before they even got filled with the Holy Spirit. But we know that after Jesus left, they couldn't be left as orphan spirit. And Jesus said, I'm going to send my spirit. And when I send my spirit, right, guess what? You'll be able to do the same thing and even more, right? Even more. So Jesus left, but the Holy Spirit of God came to live inside of us. Right, gave them power, gave them boldness, so they can be able to do uh, uh, the very same thing that Jesus did. Right? Then we saw. Then we read about John the Baptist, right? And and we explained all that yesterday, right? Uh, and now we get to the reading uh, or the feeding of the five thousand. And here we see another miracle that Jesus performs. Right? Another miracle. So let's let's begin to read. Right? We're in verse thirty. In Mark chapter six, you can find the same story in Mark chapter, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter fourteen, Luke chapter nine, and John chapter six. Amen. The same story. Each story gives a little bit more uh, information, right? Some is shorter, but some just really goes into a little bit more detail or greater detail. So here it goes. It says, after the apostles returned to Jesus, they told him everything they had done. And taught. So now they was excited, right? They were excited and they went and they told Jesus everything. In other words, they gave testimony of everything they have done and how they taught the message of the kingdom as they heard it from Jesus and how Jesus, right, sent them out by two to go do it. In other words, Jesus took them out of the classroom, right, and he brings them to the laboratory. Now, the laboratory was the field right? Was a field. Go and fish and go and uh, uh, sow seed, right? That's the laboratory. Uh, you sat in the classroom. You heard me talk. You see me. You see me do. Now, what I want to do is I'm sending you out into and I want you to replicate what I done. Now, I want you to go and do it. And you can do it because I gave you power. Now, make it happen. So now they're excited, right? And they come back and they tell Jesus everything that they done and taught. It's kind of like when you do an outreach, right? It's kind of like when you go out to missions, right? And you go on a missions trip, right? You come back, right? The pastors give you your blood, give you the blessing. They pray over you, right? Uh, they they put they give you an impartation, and then you go on your missions trip, or you go and do outreach. And God is doing so many great things because you're 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 you're, you're, you're talking about right the uh, the kingdom of God. You're you're. They're talking about Jesus and everything that he has done, right? And then what happens when you come back, you come to the church or you get together at the fellowship and you begin to what? Testify of all the things that you were able to do in Christ or, or all the things that Christ put like this, Christ done in you and through you while you were out on a mission field or you were doing outreach. So it's no difference. They were excited. They were excited that uh, they saw uh, people healed in Jesus' name. They were excited that they saw demons uh, flee. In other words, people delivered, right? They were excited and they had to tell Jesus and they went and they told and testified, right? Everything they have done and taught to Jesus, right? The next, script, the next verse says, But so many people were coming and going that Jesus and the apostles did not even have a chance to eat. They were ministering. 
right? Ministering, there were so many people coming. In other words, Jesus sends the, the sins of disciples out by two, right? Plus Jesus. And guess what they're all doing? They're all ministering, right? They're all praying for the sick. They're all casting out devils, right? We know this because they came back and they uh, they went and told Jesus everything they had done and taught. And I know Jesus was in the mix doing the same thing. So now we see a crowd about 5,000. Have you ever been so busy that you didn't get a chance to eat, right? Have you ever been so busy that you didn't get a chance to eat? Right? How about in ministry? How about in church? You've been so busy doing the things, right? Doing the, the will of God and that you didn't get a chance to eat. So it's the very same situation, right? Very same situation, right? Again, but so many people were coming and going that Jesus and the apostles did not have a chance to eat. Watch this. Then Jesus said, let's go to a place where we can be alone and get some rest. Jesus needed some rest, right? He was still, he was still in a human body and human form. He needed some rest after ministering to 5,000 people, right? That can be a drain on you spiritually, right? That's why I say that when you're gonna minister, you always wanna make sure that your cup is running over. Why? Because you wanna minister to folks in the overflow, when your cup is overflowing, you want to minister in that overflow, right? And not from what's just in your cup. Oftentimes we minister from what's in our cup and is depleting, right? It, it is draining, right? Oftentimes we minister from the overflow and then we have to tap into what's in the cup, right? After the overflow has already been given out. And that when what's gonna happen? You're gonna get tired. Jesus got tired, right? It said it. Let's get some rest, right? That's what Jesus says. So where we can be alone, but watch this. But many people saw them leave and figured out where they were going. So people from every town ran on ahead and got there first. Wow, can you talk about the hunger of the people? Right? Now again, there were some people that really followed Jesus because of who Jesus was. And then there were some people that follow after Jesus from for what they can get from him. They had a need and they just wanted Jesus to meet the need. But watch this, watch this, because it says that many people saw them leave, right, and figured out. They figured out where he was going. They seen him get on a boat. They knew Jesus was going on the other side to get some rest. And, they, and, and the scripture says that so people from every town ran on ahead and got there first. They got there before the boat reached the other side. When Jesus got out of the boat, he saw the large crowd that was like sheep without a shepherd. And he felt sorry for the people and started teaching them many things. Mm. Jesus could have told him, hey, just go home. I just finished ministering to you guys on the other side. But Jesus saw them like sheep without a shepherd. Another, another uh, uh, Matthew's gospel would say that Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw them waiting for him. So he was moved, he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus does what he, what he only knows how to do and the very reason why his father sent them, he begins to, or he continues to talk about the, uh, talk about the kingdom or proclaim the message of the kingdom and then repent and believe, right? Moved with compassion. Move with compassion. There's times that I've been on trips, and let me tell you something. When I've been tired, and I was like, I can't even minister anymore. But then all of a sudden, we find ourselves doing it again. And you know what? And this is where we see the move of God, and this is where 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 it begin. It gets really good. <clears throat> Because when you're at your weakest, and when I mean weakest, because you're drained from ministering all day, and then all of a sudden you get to another place, and you think you're going to rest, but then there's people there waiting for you, right? And you're just tired, you're just spent, and you're like, I can't, I can't, <clears throat> excuse me, God has a way of taking you 
when your energy is spent, right? And not only filling you again, but doing something powerful and doing something awesome. Something awesome. Right in in your moment of weakness, right? And I'm not talking about spiritually weak as far as like you did something wrong. I'm just talking about you've been drained because you've been ministering all day. And then you think you're gonna get some rest only to find out that you're gonna minister again. I don't know if you guys ever been there. I don't know if you ever guys ever experienced that, but when you're weak because you because you you exhausted everything ministering, you get to another place and now you got a minister man the miracles the signs the wonder even the message that you're going to preach and deliver seems to be a little bit more powerful than what you did all day i don't know if you ever experienced that but check this out it says he begins to teach them right and that evening the disciples came to jesus and said this place is like a desert without a shepherd Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> the evening disciples came to Jesus and said, This place is like a desert and it's already late. And he says, Let the crowds leave so they can go to the farms and villages near here and buy something to eat. And then Jesus replied, Well, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. But they asked him, Don't you know it would take almost a year wages to buy all of these people something to eat and then Jesus said well how much bread do you have go and see and they found out and answered they found out and answered we have five small loaves of bread and two fish right and it really wasn't theirs right because Mark's version doesn't tell us that it was a little boy school lunch right that that's all he had but Mark just gets right to it right and Jesus told the disciples to tell the people to sit down on the green grass. They sat down in groups of a hundred and groups of 50. And Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up towards heaven and blessed the food. Then he broke the bread, handed it to his disciples and, and to give to the people. And he also divided two fish so everyone could have some. And after everyone had eaten, all they want, Jesus' disciples picked up 12 large baskets of leftover bread and fish. And there were 5,000 men who ate food that day. That's amazing. That's amazing, right? That is amazing. Let's read it from the, uh, let's read it from the New King James Version, right? Or the King James Version, because what are we seeing here? We, we, we are seeing Jesus displays what? His power over the laws of nature, right? Because it's impossible to feed 5,000 people when you only have two fish, right? And five loaves of bread. It's impossible, but, but how many of us know that what's impossible for man is possible for God. What's impossible for man is possible for God. And we see Jesus at this moment. What is Jesus doing? He displays his power over the laws of nature, right? And he has compassion over the multitude as well let's read it in the in the king james version it says then the apostles gathered to jesus and told them all the things all the things right both what they had done and what they and what they had taught and jesus said to them come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while for there were many coming and going and did not even want they did not even have time to eat so they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves but the multitude saw them departing and many knew and ran their foot from all cities. Wow, I, I, I would have loved to see this, right? Because they got in a boat and listen, and they ran on foot, got to the other side where they knew Jesus was going to be, right? How fast did they run or how slow was the boat going, right? Maybe the, maybe the attempt for them to go on the boat was so that they can rest, Right, the, the uh, uh, nobody's going. Well, in this case, nobody didn't follow them. Follow them on the boat, so the boat could be a place where they can find rest. Uh, is deserted, right? They're on the sea until they get to the other side. Okay, we don't know. But the thing is, 
the people found out where Jesus was going. They saw him get on the boat. They found out where he was going. And the thing is, they ran by foot and they got to the other side to where Jesus was. Now, I've been on the Sea of Galilee. I spent the night at the Sea of Galilee. I know how big the Sea of Galilee is. Now, my question is, how far did they run? How far did they run? They were desperate. They were desperate to hear more of what Jesus had to say because it, t it tells us what we're going to read that when they got there to the other side, right, Jesus began to teach them some things. They never heard a man spoke with so much authority and so much power the way Jesus spoke. So they were hungry, hungry to the point where they were desperate to hear more. You probably had some folks that just wanted to get, wanted a touch from the Lord. But, but, but the ones that ran afoot, I believe they were well. I believe they were healthy. They was just hungry in spirit. So they ran because they wanted to hear more of what Jesus had to say and they ran and they ran and they ran to the point where they got there before Jesus got there wow how many of us is that hungry to sit at Jesus feet that we will be waiting on the Lord before the Lord got there answer that question think about that one how many of us are that hungry that we would wait on the Lord before he shows up. In other words, we know he's going to show up, but we're so hungry, we're so desperate, we're so thirsty for more of Jesus, right? And more of his presence that we're willing to get to a place to wait on the Lord before he showed up. Mm. And ima imagine taking that, right? Taking that. And being somewhere before the Lord shows up. And then when the Lord shows up, he's moved with compassion because he sees how hungry we are for relationship, for fellowship, to want to know more, you know, about the kingdom. So these people ran and got there before Jesus, right? So watch this. It says, they arrived before him and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out of the, came out, he saw multitude, he saw the, he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion. Three things when it comes to evangelism, right? When it comes to evangelism, right? We have to see the need. And this is what Jesus saw, right? When Jesus went, when G, and, and, when, and Jesus, when he came out, he saw so we have to see the need first in evangelism. And then it goes on and says, and he was moved with compassion. What does that mean? He felt the need, right? He felt the need. So when it comes to evangelism, we need to take some keys from Jesus or some lessons from Jesus. It says, and Jesus, when he came out and saw a great multitude, here's the first key to evangelism. He saw the need. When we evangelize or we're going to do evangelism, we have to see the need, right? And then it goes on and says, and was moved with compassion, right? Now what happened? What did Jesus, what, what happened after Jesus saw the need? <clears throat> he felt the need, right? So listen, folks, we have to feel the need, not just see it, right? We have to use our senses, right? But not just see the need, we have to feel the need, right of the lost right or those that are hungry to know more about the lord right and then what happens after that right it says because they were like sheep not having a shepherd and then what's the next thing he began to teach them many things so we see we feel and then we meet the need we meet the need right and this is evangelism in his finest and Jesus shows us the heart of evangelism we see the need we feel the need and then we meet the need right some sometimes meeting the need might just be giving them a meal sometimes meeting the need might just be explaining the message of the kingdom right 
in such a way where people just are hungry and just want to hear more, right? So this is what Jesus did. He saw the multitude, so he saw the need, right? He was moved with compassion, so he felt the need, and he said, listen, they're like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, there's no one to guide them. There is no one to feed them. They're hungry. They're hungry, but there is no one. So what? We have to, we have to shepherd them, right? See the need, feel the need, and then meet the needs. We have to shepherd. We have to shepherd them, right? Especially those that are hungry for more of the gospel, right? And then teach, right? And teach. That's powerful, folks. That is powerful. Jesus shows us the heart of evangelism in his finest. In his finest. He demonstrates that for us. You can't get it any clearer than that. You can't get it any clearer than that, folks, right? Jesus gives us a lesson on that. Listen, you can't, you can't evangelize if you don't see the needs. You can't evangelize if you don't feel the need. And you're not moved with compassion. Jesus gives us the key. We have to see it, and then we have to come to that same place where they're at so we can under so 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 we can uh, come on man this is some good stuff that jesus is showing us when it comes to evangelism when it comes to ministering and and teaching see the need feel the need meet the need right he says come aside by yourself or yourself to the desert place and rest a while. So the disciples came back from, from a successful time of doing ministry, right? Because it opens up in verse 30 that they came back and they went to Jesus and they told Jesus. In other words, they gave testimony, right? Of everything that they have seen and everything that they have done and everything that they taught, right? So they were happy. They were happy, but at the same time, Jesus knew because they was out there all day ministering, Jesus knew they needed rest. And then Jesus also knows when it's time to go back to work. And then Jesus also knows when it's time to rest. Right? We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells us that it is time to rest, rest. When the Holy Spirit tells you that it's time to work, work. Amen? There's a time to rest, and there's a time to work. God is not crazy. God knows that you live in a physical body made of flesh. Your spirit is willing, but the flesh does get weak, right? So your body needs to recuperate, right? So it can continue to do what? Continue to minister, right? So there's no sense of burning yourself out. Right? We see we see Jesus model this. How many times Jesus, after he finished preaching and teaching and the laying of hands, and he went away to, to rest and he and also went away to pray. He rested. He rested. So that's important for us. We have to take care of this body because if we abuse this body and we don't rest, it limits us from doing what God wants us to do. Right? It limits us. Your health is important. Right? Your health is important. So you should be concerned about your health also. Why? Because there's a lot of work for us that God wants us to do. And when, when, when we're not concerned about our health and when we don't rest, we limit what God can do in us and through us because our bodies can't keep up. Our spirit want to run. It wants to run. It wants to run. But if your body is not, if your body is not healthy, your body is, is going to want to quit and give up. 
So it's important that you get your rest. So Jesus knew this. Jesus knew that they were tired. He was also tired, right? And he said, hey, let's go over to the other side. Let's go to a, de a, a deserted place so we can get some rest. But what happens? We know that the people heard and found out where Jesus was going and they ran on foot and they got there before Jesus got there and he was on a boat. Now for them to go on a boat across the Galilee, right? That's a short trip. And the people that's running, they had to run around to get to where Jesus was. But listen, but because they were hungry and they were desperate to hear more of Jesus and, and because they had a need of what Jesus uh, 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 would, preached about, they ran ahead, got there before Jesus. Again, so this is the question that I asked earlier. How many of us really have a need for God the way these people uh, demonstrated? So hungry to to be in his presence. How many of us are willing to get there before Jesus, right? To get there before Jesus. They were hungry. They was thirsty. Spiritually hungry, spiritually thirsty. They wanted to hear more. Wow. Scripture tells us that Jesus is moved with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, Jesus knew that without a shepherd, that uh, that sheep were in a lot of trouble, right? Sheep without a shepherd, sheep without a shepherd are in a lot of trouble. There's no protection. There is no guidance. So the enemy can just come in right away and deceive them, or the enemy can just come in and swallow a person up who has no guidance, right? I uh, have no protection. So Jesus knew they were in trouble. Why? Because sheep can't fend for themselves. Right? They can't fend for themselves. They're sheep. They're gentle creatures. Right? And if they have no one to lead them to water or to food, what's going to happen? They're going to die of starvation. Right? Because they're hungry. So the scripture tells us that Jesus was moved with compassion for the people right among the crowds because he knew what? He knew their demands, their pressing demands. He knew their demands. And Jesus was moved into action because of, because of their great needs. Because when he got on to the other side, he could have been like, listen, I just want to rest. What are you guys doing here? But that's not Jesus, man. That's that's not Jesus' heart. Jesus' heart was to be for the people, right? To be around the people. Jesus' heart was to make sure that the message of the kingdom was preached and proclaimed. Jesus' heart was making sure that not only did they hear the message of the kingdom, but they repented right and they believed that was his heart and the scripture tells us so he began to teach the many things he begins to teach the many things here we see a servant king at his best because Mark gospel gives us a picture of Jesus as the servant king he's moved with compassion he begins to teach him many things. We, we see Jesus as a faithful shepherd, right? And Jesus took care of what? Of their most pressing need. And then what he did? What did he do? There were sheep without a shepherd. They were hungry for food. What kind of food did Jesus um, serve them? Jesus fed them the word of God. He fed them the word of God, right? They were hungry. They ran to the other side. They ran. So this lets me know that these were the people that were hungry for more of what Jesus had to say. We know the sick, right? We know the sick and the lame. They're not going to get there before the boat. But those that are hungry for more of God and more of what he had to say to, and, more to, and, and, and hungry to hear more about the kingdom as Jesus spoke of it, right? And they ran to the other side. 
now it gets now it gets interesting right because it says when they was now far spent right far now far spent right that's not a that's not a slang word that uh, uh that was made up spent we use spent to say we're tired, right? Some people might think that that's a slang word or it's a street word, something that we may know it ain't. It's in the Bible. It says when they were now far spent, his disciples came and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. He says, send them away. One of them says, send them away. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Peter, right? Because Peter was bullheaded sometimes. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Peter, right? Send them away right that they may go home right or into the surrounding countries and villages and buy themselves some bread for they have nothing to eat but he answered and said to them you give them something to eat wait a minute if if you're not reading this correctly you just might miss what jesus did right there you just might miss what jesus did right there right because they always expected for Jesus to do the impossible. And what was Jesus trying to teach them? Jesus was trying to teach them, or in other words, Jesus was trying to give them a chance to operate their faith and to continue to do more of what they were doing as Jesus gave them power. In other words, operate your faith. You guys are always coming to me to bail you out. You you guys are always coming to me to do something. You guys are you wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You feed them. You feed them. Right? You feed them. Hey, remember when Jesus told Peter, if you love me, then feed my sheep. He asked him another time, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And he asked him a third time, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, right? Now we know that this is for the three times that Peter denied Jesus, right? And then Jesus kind of reaffirms or, let, or kind of let Peter know, listen, I'm not, I'm not worried about you deny me it had to happen so 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 the son of man can be raised up right it had to happen right but in other words if we're reading this and we go by quickly we miss what jesus jesus is trying to give jesus is teaching them a lesson but not only a lesson jesus is trying to get them to exercise their faith you feed them you feed them jesus knew they didn't have all of them jesus knew they didn't have that much money right to, to feed all the people Jesus knew they didn't have all that they didn't have that much food but what is Jesus trying to teach them operate your faith in other words I'm not gonna be with you for long my time is coming right the son of man is gonna be lifted hey, hey I'm going home right to prepare a place right? I'm not gonna be with you so in other words you've guys seen me in action and then I gave you a taste of it because I empowered you and you guys just came back giving me testimony of all the great things that you done and, and, and what you taught so listen listen Go with that. You already experienced it. Go with that. Operate your faith. Feed the people. Feed the people. And again, they came up with excuses. Right? Anytime God wants us to operate our faith, right? When we're not sure of ourselves, we always come up with excuses of why we can't do it. Or why you want me to do it. Right? He's trying to strengthen their faith. When God tells you to do something, he's trying to strengthen your faith. This is not a time for us to come up with a million excuses of why we can't, right? It should be a time for us to say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. And if you want me to do it, then I'm going to do it. Make sense? I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, you're God. So if you want me to do it, then I'm going to do it. And, and, and I believe everything else will be clear after I took a step of faith and I put it into action. But whenever God wants us to do something, oftentimes we come up with so many excuses why we shouldn't. So they came up with excuses, right? Because he answered them and he says, give them something to eat. In other words, exercise your faith. You've seen what I can do. 
and I've given you the same power. Exercise your faith, feed them. And they said to him, we shall go, oh, excuse me, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Right? At this point, Jesus is like, you guys are not getting it. <laughs> okay, how many loaves of bread do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said five and two fish. And then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on, on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties, right? And then it says he blessed and he broke the loaves and he gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments of fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. Right? 5,000 men. Amazing. We serve a God that is more than enough. We serve a God that, listen, listen, <laughs> God can take your little and he can make the most out of it to the point where you got leftovers. Amen. That's the God that we serve. He's more than enough. He can take your little and God knows how to make it so much that you got leftovers. Mm. So they come to Jesus, they come to Jesus and say, listen, send them away for we eat for they have nothing to eat, right? So both, we see both Jesus and we see both the disciples, right? At this point, we could say that the disciples saw the need of the people. They were hungry. So we got to give them credit for that. They saw the need. So they tell Jesus, send them away, right? Send them away. This was their solution. Their solution was to get rid of the people, you know, and get rid of the needy. And we have to be careful, right? We have to be careful. And we have to be sensitive that we don't try to get rid of the people, right? Especially the needy. We have to be real careful when it comes to that. But then Jesus saw a different solution, right? Jesus saw something else, right? And he wanted the disciples to see, to, 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 to see it also. In other words, you give them something to eat, right? Do as I did. I fed the people. But at this time, you need to operate your faith. Put it into action. Trust God. You've been with me for how long? You should know by now that there is nothing impossible for God. And all you need to do is just ask him. And if you ask him with enough faith, just watch and see what God can do. You feed them. And what was their answer? Well, shall we go and buy 200 worth of bread, $200 worth of bread, or, or two, excuse me, 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Right? That's a, that's a question that somebody asks in a sense. They were angry. That's like, they were, I believe they were angry. They were just frustrated by what Jesus said. Because you can hear it in the way they said it. Shall we go in and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? With an attitude, right? You got to read that. When you read it, read it with an attitude. That's how they came to Jesus. Right? They tried to send the people away. Right? They tried to send people away. Because at this point and at this time, what happened? Jesus said, let's go to the other side so that we could get some rest. So they probably thought that they actually was going to get some rest. But when they got to but when they got to the other side, the multitude was there waiting for them because they ran ahead. Right? So now a little bit of frustration came in because they tired. They need some rest. Right? So they go to Jesus and tell Jesus, right? After Jesus finished teaching them some things, okay, now send them away. Send them home. Send them home. Why? Because they probably want to get some rest. But then Jesus has a different solution and, and and the response was not what the disciples wanted so you can see their frustration and you can see that they got an attitude shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat that's an attitude that's an attitude we've all been there 
Right? We've all been there. If you, heard, if you heard the Spirit, if you heard the voice of the Holy Spirit correctly, and you're tired, and you just want to get some rest, and then the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, and you're like, but why? I'm tired. Why do I have to do that? We've all been there. We've given attitude to the Holy Spirit when we didn't feel like doing something, but we knew that we had to. We had other plans. We just wanted to hang out and just lay around. But then the Holy Spirit comes in and he changes the plans. Why? Because there's work to be done. Let's be honest with ourselves. We've, we've given God an attitude when we thought that we was going to rest, right? But we're to do something else under the influence of the Holy Spirit, right? So he asks them, how many loaves do you have and go see? And here's some stuff that I, I put down in my notes. God's way of provision always begins with what we already have. If you want to write that down. Right? God's way of provision always begins with what we already have. Right? God will take your little of what you already have and he will make the most out of it. He will make the most. Why? Because he gets the glory and he gets the honor when he takes the little that you got and then for reasons you can wrap your head around it, he stretched it and stretched it and stretched it. And you're like, my God, <laughs> that had to be God. Let me tell you something. We did a dinner one time. We did a dinner. And when we did a dinner, we asked people from the church to bring certain, certain types of dishes. And wouldn't you know that this was the day that only one family brought a large tray of rice. But we had all kind of meats. We, all had, we had all kind of sweets. We had all kind of drinks. I had a feeling that I, I thought that I, I thought or my feeling was, well, maybe people just want to wash their carbs. <laughs> so that's why there was no other carbs there. Nobody brought no mac and cheese, right? It was just meat, 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 beans, and dessert. And the one time where people normally bring five or six trays of rice, only a family brought one tray of rice. Right? And my wife and one of the helpers and I, we looked and she told me, and I was like, well, what are we going to do? Aha! What did we do? We did the only thing that we could. And we said, Lord, stretch this. Stretch this. Because we don't have enough rice to feed all these people. Stretch this, Lord. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We fed a lot of people. And this one tray of rice that we had fed all these people at this function that we did. And let me tell you something, folks. At the end of the day, we had some rice left over. One little tray. But... We prayed and we asked God to stretch it. And it was like a never ending rice tray. You know, the more we gave, the more we gave, it seemed like the more there was there. In other words, we came to a point where we was like, well, we got to get rid of this rice, right? So the more spoons we put in the trays, right? It was like, man, is there, is there a, a, a bottomless pit to this tray that we didn't know about? Because it's impossible to feed that many people with one tray of rice, but with God, it's possible. So we've experienced this. We've experienced this, right? So he says, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. Once again, write this down. If you write it somewhere, write it so you can, so you can remember this. God's way of provision always begins with what you already have. And why, why does he does that, right? And this is what I believe, because he wants us to use what we already have wisely. Amen. Amen. And we got to be careful 
with our prayers and how we go to God. Right? We have to be careful of how we pray about what we have. God wants us to use it wisely. Amen. And then it goes on and says, Then he commended them to make them all sit down in groups of green grass. And Jesus did this because the people, again, remember, they were like sheep without a shepherd. And what was Jesus doing when he's grouped them in, in, in hundreds and then fifties, right? He grouped them because Jesus was shepherding them. So we see Jesus being a shepherd. So what shepherds would do is they would group, right? The sheep, the lamb, right? The goats, whatever it was, they would group them in numbers. So now we see Jesus in action and he sees all these people, a shepherd, I mean, sheep without a shepherd. And now what does Jesus, what does Jesus do? So for this moment in their lives right now, while Jesus has them, he begins to shepherd them and he begins to group them the way a shepherd would. Right. In other words, a good shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures as Psalm 23, you know, tells us. Right. So they sat down. Right, we're almost closing up. So they sat down in ranks of a hundred and in fifties. So we see some organization going on in Jesus, right? In what Jesus is doing. So Jesus, not only was he radical, but Jesus is organized. So we can see some organization skills in Jesus, right? We know Jesus ready, very radical in what he taught and what he preached. It changed the world upside down, but hey. You can be radical and organized at the same time. And we see Jesus do this, right? We see Jesus. He, he, he begins to put things into order and bring order to the masses. He took five, he took, he looked up to heaven, he blessed, and he broke the loaves. And when Jesus blessed him, when when listen, when Jesus blessed uh before the meal he didn't bless the food he blessed god for supplying it that's that's interesting right that's interesting because oftentimes what we 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 bless the food jesus didn't bless the food he blessed right the one who supplied it how about that how would it sound if we go and sit down for dinner and when we say grace, instead of praying over the food like we do, we just ask the Lord, thank you, Lord, for this meal and supplying this meal before us. And we make it right. And I'm not saying that we don't do it. We don't do it. I, I believe we do. But oftentimes we bless the food before we bless God for it. Right. Sometimes we say something like this, Lord, bless this food that it be nourishing to our bodies and to our health. How about if we just switch it up and say, Lord, thank you for supplying what is before us and what we're about to eat. Right. How about this? If we bless the Lord for supplying of food, then there's no need for us to bless the food that it be nourishing to our bodies. Because if God supplied it, then there is no need for us to worry about the harm that the food is going to do to us or could do to us. Think about that. If God supplied it, let's bless him for supplying it without us worrying about What's going to happen to the to our bodies or whatever when we eat the food, right? And the scripture goes on and says, So they ate and were all filled. And they look up and 12 baskets full of fragments and of fish. In other words, Jesus could have just left, uh, left this behind, but he didn't. Jesus what generously provides right provides but he doesn't want things wasted right he doesn't want things wasted and this it's not because Jesus is cheap or doesn't trust or, or, or put like this doesn't trust for future provision he simply knew that wastefulness didn't glorify God of all provisions wow Think about that. 
whatever we waste, it doesn't honor God, it doesn't glorify God, right? Whatever we waste, it doesn't honor God or glorify God because God is not about waste, right? What, what people think is a waste, God knows how to make something beautiful with it, right? So if God knows how to make something, if God is concerned about what people consider waste, us, right? Because people would count us out because if we did anything wrong, if if we said this, we said that, right? Uh, people would be like, oh, that's a waste of a person, but God doesn't see anyone as a waste. God sees the beauty in it, right? And God sees what can be done. So if God is concerned about wasteful things, then we should be concerned about wasteful things and make sure that there is no waste, right? Especially if it's a blessing from God and God supplied it. So we should be concerned and mindful about making sure that we don't waste anything that the Lord blessed us with. Because we always wanna make sure that God gets glory and God gets the honor. Amen. God gets the glory and God gets the honor. And in closing up, because it's 10 o'clock, folks, listen, we serve a God that is more than enough. Amen. A God that is more than enough. And remember, God's way of provision always begins with what you already have amen so start with what you have and then ask the Lord to multiply that amen start with what you have thank the Lord trust the Lord for giving you what you have already and then ask the Lord to multiply what he already supplied amen we serve a God that's more than enough, and he knows how to supply, excuse me, provide. Amen. So, hey, this is my time, and I pray that you are blessed. Listen, go back and read the scriptures. Go back and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Go back and study the word, right? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that people are always moved and inspired by by men and women of God who teach who teach and preach the word of God but listen you can't piggyback off of somebody else's inspiration or offer of somebody else's revelation you have to go and be inspired or inspire yourself right by reading his words and you and you have to get your own revelation See, when we hear men and women preach and teach and we get inspired, that should motivate us to go and search and study more for ourselves so we can come to a place where the same way, right, the Holy Spirit revealed uh, this or that to them, he can reveal it to us. He's not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of persons right our job is to get you hungry and to get you thirsty right so that you can go and you can begin to dissect the scriptures and seek the lord for yourself you can't piggyback off of somebody else's blessing you can't piggyback off of somebody else's inspiration you can't piggyback off of somebody else's revelation you got to get your own amen you got to get your own we thank the man and we thank the woman of God. But once we've heard them and we're hungry and we want more, man, you got to go and you got to seek that out. Amen. You got to seek that out. God bless you. This is my day. It's thankful Thursday. I listen, listen. In all things, be thankful to God. Have an amazing day. An amazing day. And I will see you tomorrow. Same time. Amen. Stay alert, stay alive. Stay alert, and stay alive. And remember, touch your life for Christ. 
Have a good one.